changing role of the instructor. This is a controversial subject, especially for those who assume that the changing role means a lessening of the instructor's importance. But as was implied in the previous scenes, the opposite is true. The instructor's role today is just as important as it ever was, maybe more so. A modern systematic approach to instruction and advances in instructional technology have expanded many instructor roles into new areas some of them behind the scenes. Let's examine the instructor's changing role. We'll explore why the instructor's role has changed and identify some of the roles the instructor is performing today. By doing so, we'll also identify some benefits the Air Force derives from the change. In the past, the instructor was the central and dominant figure in what has been called a body of knowledge approach to learning. A given course had information that was believed to be more or less traditionally important for effective student performance. It was the instructor's job to call on his knowledge and experience to impart the information considered essential. Many years earlier, the master-apprentice technique proved to be effective, and still can be. But it is costly and seldom practical in today's large-scale training programs. The emergence of modern textbooks provided a reservoir of knowledge. But these were general knowledge sources and too often were not adapted to the specific learning needs of students. Instructors taught what they thought was important. During these times, when a student failed to learn, it was usually considered more his own fault than an instructional problem. Often, individual student learning differences were not fully explored as a possible cause of failure. Despite their weaknesses, these methods served us fairly well until historical events and technological advancements began to change things. These historical events shocked the United States into the sudden realization that it no longer held a monopoly on technology. Among other things came the realization that a new approach, a new educational technology was required to increase educational efficiency. As a result, we have seen technical advances throughout much of our educational system. But this does not mean that the instructor is being replaced by a machine. It does mean that his traditional role has been modified and, in many cases, expanded to new areas. Today, some instructors help design courses or portions of courses. Some help prepare course control documents and instructional material as well as evaluate and define instruction, all using the principles of instructional systems development. This instructor in the 505th Training Detachment at Norton Air Force Base, California, conducts a detailed task analysis, which will assist him in developing clearly stated learning objectives. These objectives will precisely define what must be learned by a student in order for him to perform properly on the job. This practice weeds out most of the nice to know information and assures that the required tasks are included, thus providing graduates who are neither undertrained nor overtrained. In this instance, the instructor functions as part of the instructional team whose job it is to effectively apply the systematic approach to training. This student-centered approach also emphasizes increased attention to such areas as student counseling and providing individual student assistance. the loop on backwards. 
I keep a sharp lookout for individual problems so I can step in if one of the students gets bogged down. If too many students have the same problem, I can advise the curriculum developers with the possible need for revision. One way instructional programs have changed in recent years is in the expanded use of increasingly sophisticated media. I've been teaching technical training courses for a long time, and I've seen many advances take place. I've watched the birth of programmed instruction and have designed a few program lessons myself. As a matter of fact, many of our instructors have assisted in the development of audiovisual lessons. Multimedia presentations, like the synchronized tape slide lessons, were introduced. They require the student to respond to what he has seen and heard. I find that instructors, when using equipment like this, are able to provide more individual assistance to the student. Experiences show me that the interaction between the student and his study material at a rate suited to his abilities is an effective learning approach. As you can see, this learning center is equipped with several types of audiovisual equipment, including synchronized tape slide lesson, film strip, and videotape units. This student is using a responder and has just had difficulty with one of the questions. The instructor is giving him additional guidance. Now that the student's questions have been answered and he has made a correct response, the instructor is free to work with other students. For this class, the instructor was available to help his students. But for many of our lessons, the students are able to work alone. Another form of media that has changed the instructor's role is simulation. At Mather Air Force Base, simulators are used in an advanced phase of navigator training and will soon be used in undergraduate navigator training. Like this student, several others can practice electronic warfare techniques simultaneously. The instructor can observe and assist each student, insert equipment malfunctions, and assess student performance. The use of simulation in undergraduate navigator training will include a blend of instruction involving the T-45 simulator and the aircraft, with the instructor as the key ingredient to make it all work. In spite of all these changes, we have not abandoned the traditional classroom by any means. I'm an instructor in the Department of Comptroller Training. In order to provide quality instruction where group learning is most effective, we find ourselves doing many things we've always done. For example, the development of visual aids. I'm reviewing some slides now that, upon approval, will be used in a classroom presentation to be given soon. There are still many training situations where the lecture method of instruction is appropriate. But we do try to assure that students become active rather than passive listeners. Sergeant Dietrich, could you tell me the next functional man management, please? Controlling. You know, I really enjoy working with a group of students. And when I'm working with a detailed student-centered lesson plan, I know I'm working with materials which have the best chance of teaching the student what he really needs to know. I'm still an information source, whether I'm working with a group or with individual students. But I try to provide only the information the students need, when they need it. Students find this approach challenging and rewarding. In fact, I believe I contribute to a better trained individual. This automatically makes for a better Air Force. Whether instructors are actually teaching pilots, navigators, technicians, or other specialists, or maybe working on the curriculum development staff, they will be playing many roles and performing many duties which will challenge their flexibility and adaptability. How well the student learns depends on the quality of instruction, regardless of whether it is presented by new or traditional methods. The material instructors use is designed and very carefully prepared by qualified individuals. The flood of innovative instructional techniques has made more alternatives available. And where circumstances permit, instruction can be tailored to meet individual needs. But a word of caution. 
The tremendous benefits derived from the instructor's changing role can best be realized if instructors are capable of exploiting every facet of the education technology available to them. Professional skills, hard work, and motivation are still the hallmarks of the professional instructor and vital to the success of Air Force instructional programs. The changing role of the instructor means dealing with the student on more of an individual basis, as well as dealing with various aspects of sophisticated technology. The instructor is part of the learning system and contributes significantly to its effectiveness. It all leads to quality training for the Air Force. The student, the technology, the instructor, all are part of a total system. The key is the instructor who makes it all work.